Joining us now, a thyroid disease survivor and healthy living advocate, Iwoma Ofotube. Good morning. Good morning. And thank Good you morning. for joining us. Good I hope morning. I got your name correctly. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Now, talk to us about thyroid. What does, uh, what does hyperthyroidism, if that is what it is, what, do, what is it about? Talk to us. Hyperthyroidism is just a... Uh, just a kind of thyroid, but thyroid itself. Let's talk about the thyroid gland. Mm. The thyroid gland is a, is a butterfly-shaped gland that is located below, just below the Adam's apple. Everybody has a thyroid gland. Mm. And this thyroid gland has a very huge role it plays in the body. That the whole body system, the organs, the tissues, the cells are connected to it. Mm. For, it, for the whole body to function optimally. So it's the master gland of uh, the gland that is responsible for the body metabolism. Let me, let me just wow. describe it like that. Yeah, it works with the brain, the heart, the digestive system, the guts, everywhere. So if there's any problem, if any problem occurs at the uh, thyroid gland, that is, it will affect the whole body, virtually the whole body. Wow. You know, so it could be hyperthyroidism, which when the, um, the body, it produces two hormones that are responsible for that metabolism. Mm. But when the hormones are overproduced in the body, you call it hyperthyroidism. What causes those hormones to overproduce? Uh, there are so many causes of hyper, I mean, thyroid disease. Mm. There are so many causes. It could be autoimmune. That is uh, in a layman's language where the immune system begins to affect Fight itself. attack itself. the thyroid gland. Okay, okay. Yes, and some people can come up with hyperthyroidism. And we call it autoimmune because it can, that autoimmune can affect the thyroid gland in such a way that it can be overproducing or underproducing. And um, um, another thing is um, the. Um, those people that come up with iodine deficiency, mm -hmm. okay. yes, there are so many, co and it's hereditary. Hereditary? Oh. Yes, okay. it's hereditary. So a lot of things can come up, but scientifically, you know, all these things, and we are just coming up to find out exactly why this small gland can be just worked and the whole body is wrecked. Mm -hmm. mm. uh -huh. So now you see it's connected to the whole body system. It's connected it to everything. the whole body system because when the symptom comes, it starts from the brain, you start, there are some mental, you know, when we talk about mental illness, it's linked to so many mental illnesses. So what are the symptoms? Yes, like I, I said, there are different types. Okay. Hyperthyroidism has its own symptoms. symptoms. The, one, the person can come, out, come, out, come down with weight loss. There's unexplained weight loss, like what happened to me. Mm. I had hyperthyroidism, but before then, you may be having a kind of some... Um, psychological, mental issues, anxiety, panic attacks, and um, depression. Really? Yes. Then you can come down with, um, you'll be just be losing weight unsolicited. So how do you manage um, thyroid? How you manage? How do you manage? How did you manage it's to treatable. cope when it happened? Okay, happened. when it happened to yes. me, initially, you know, I want to mention something here. You know. In Nigeria, not even only in Nigeria, all over the world, is underreported mm. because the symptoms mimic other health conditions. When you start having some kind of symptoms, you may, you may, you may attribute it to all these common Jeez. diseases. Okay. Do you understand? Like then, I was, you know, I've, be, I've always been on the big side. I was going to the gym and I thought I would just, you know, but I was kind of, I was losing the weight rapidly and fatigue, that, that's panic, that palpitations. Mm. You walk from here to there, your heart begins to race. Mm. To race, you begin to pant. Fatigue, you cannot even, at times, somebody will discuss something with you. The next minute, the person asks you, the person you say, ah, I, I can't remember. remember again. Yeah, brain fog. Mm. So it comes with a lot of things, psychological and infertility too. Mm. Yes. 
You know, I told you it's connected to, to all, 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 the the, the, yeah, all the body systems. So it affects the, the, uh, the female, both female and male reproductive organ. But I will call it a kind of gender specific disease because it affects women eight to ten times. Mm. Okay, but, but as we, like you have said, it affects women a lot of more, than more than the men. men. Yeah. And you also mentioned earlier that um, there has not been enough awareness on the situation. There has How not been a lot spread enough. the word because uh, more like other diseases that people talk about malaria and uh, typhoid and the likes even cancer yeah. thyroid is underreported like you said and yes. um, the word has not been spread everywhere how do we ensure that people get to understand what this is, this is about and that is why my organization was established to spread the awareness and that's what we're doing today i also want to appreciate tvc they have been they have always been there for us Anytime we come up with all this awareness, media can help us. We do a lot of, then government can help us. Even um, some of our hospitals to help us to spread the awareness. You know, these days the, the, the disease is becoming too rampant. It's mm -hmm. becoming too common. Mm -hmm. You know, when people only, you said something when you were introducing the, so people think it's only when you have got that yeah. there are so many people that have a thyroid disease but they don't have got mm. You can see somebody growing the way how you mentioned hypothyroidism. Mm. Hypothyroidism makes someone is just opposite of hyperthyroidism. When someone is you know adding weight, putting on weight, putting on weight, no matter your effort, the dieting, the exercise, it cannot reduce right. unless you start treating it, but it is manageable and it is treatable. All right, uh, Iroma uh, of Fortube, let's leave it here now. Thank you for speaking with us. Joining us now is a thyroid disease survivor and healthy living advocate, Iroma of Fortube. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Now, oh, talk to us about uh, your level of assessment on the uh, level of awareness of um, thyroid in thyroid disease in Nigeria and what do you think is hampering it being uh, reported? Misdiagnosis. Mm. Misdiagnosis, that is number one reason because like I said before, the symptoms mimic other health conditions. So most of the times doctors don't go in depth. Does it mean they are not aware themselves? They do not have detailed knowledge about thyroid? And I would say it does not really occur to them because they don't really understand what this thyroid is causing right now. But the awareness is on. They don't, it doesn't really occur to them. Okay, for instance, somebody called me the other time I said, and said, because of this awareness, I had to press the doctor to give me, recommend me for thyroid function test because I've been having these um, panic attacks, I've been having these palpitations and he kept giving me, um, treating me for high blood pressure and all that. And remember that high blood pressure is an associated um, symptom, is one of the symptoms of, so they don't really go in depth to find out when a patient comes and complains repeatedly of one particular problem. They don't go back to check what could be the underlying cause of this. What we are pressing is to make thyroid function tests, a, a, that is a staple test, All right. diagnosis. When any patient complains of it, certain things, even some doctors, they don't come up to tell us that one of the causes of infertility is it's thyroid, thyroid disease. But now, yes. talking about uh, uh, the thyroid uh, function test, uh, can uh, someone, an individual, perform a thyroid neck check, uh, check on himself, like examine it on himself? But yes, mm. you can. You can go to the mirror, stay in the mirror, just raise your neck, and someone can help you check. You drink water, swallow it. If you see something going up and down here, then you have to suspect that something is wrong. Or oh, it's not supposed to move in the first place? No, it's not. It's not supposed to move. But once you just you check yourself, when you see something going up and down, or you see your neck enlarging in, in, you know, in an unusual way, you, you have to call for, mm. for medical attention. And most especially, 
it, like I said before, it's not everybody that has uh, thyroid disease, has goiter or mm. enlargement of the gland. Some people will, will be suffering from other, maybe mm. clinical symptoms, uh, other internal symptoms of thyroid disease. Somebody may be having, okay, I was talking about that woman. She said that doctor told her after a, a repeated visit to the doctor that she had premenopausal syndrome. Whoa. And she couldn't, she wasn't getting better. And she told doctor, I want to, I've been reading this woman's write up. I've been reading, let me go and check myself. I'm having panic attack. I'm having some similar symptoms, you know, with what she always mentions. Mm. And she went, it happened that she has hyperthyroidism. So um, how does treatment come? Is it when you uh, check it early that you can treat it quickly or how does it happen? First of all, we encourage people. You know, we always say that early detection, yeah. it, goes a, it goes a long way to help, you know. When we encourage people, especially women, to always go, even if it's once in six months, you go for a thyroid function test, it is treatable, especially okay. when it's diagnosed at and that early, early stage. Yes, it is treatable, and even when it's because it, it does not just come and kill like that. It kills. It kills. Yes, it doesn't just come and kill like that. It's something that may be in your body for a very long time before that. I don't know whether that is why they don't really talk about it, mm. because maybe doctors must have tried up out many options and now say, let's do thyroid function. Well, you know what when. A lot of you talk about um, going for tests once in six months, yes. but when a, a situation or a state like Lagos, where everyone is gearing to go, there's traffic everywhere, everyone is trying to make ends meet. Mm. Uh, thinking about going for a thyroid uh, test uh, doesn't readily come to come to mind. So, how does your organization, how is your organization pushing for such a situation where people go for mm. tests regularly? Okay, well, first of all, what I did because part of my challenges when I had this disease was locating where to do the test. Mm. Okay. Not all hospitals have Not that. all labs. And some of them may do it and may not do it well. well. And get the right values. So first of all, the first thing I did was to approach a, a digital diagnostic center. Number one is to get, is for the reason of our accuracy, to get what we want to always make sure is a trusted diagnostic center. Then secondly, to give us a quality healthcare in an affordable rate. Mm. So now, you can get to be tested on a thyroid at the rate you can always you know, afford, afford. Mm. which is very, very, very different from what we used to have. All mm. right. Yes. L let's leave it here now. Roma of Fortube, thank you for educating us on uh, thyroidism. All right, it's uh, Thyroid Awareness Month, and of course, we have joining us in the studio a thyroid disease survivor and healthy living advocate, Uroma Ofotube. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, looking at this now, how do we, do we deal with the stigma? Because I know that you were there, and you would have faced some sort of stigma at one point. So how do, we, how do people who have thyroid um, handle it? How do you deal with the stigma? Is it how do people that have the thyroid or people surrounding them? Everything all together. Okay. Well, it's something that the person, the victim herself or himself cannot even help. But people around, surrounding, like colleagues, mm. um, bosses, siblings, even parents. I have seen a girl that of about 26 years that came to me I said one day her mommy was just angry. I said, I don't know whether this thing you're carrying, whether a man will even marry you in mm. this one. You know, that kind of thing with, you know, coupled with someone that is always, that is always, you know, switching into depression, depression. and anxiety. You know, it's just that, like I said before, thyroid disease is the best thing that will happen to anybody is to get diagnosed. Mm. Once you know what is wrong with you, you'll be able to know how to manage it. Now, as a healthy lifestyle advocate, yes. talk to us about uh, the kind of lifestyle for persons who have, you know, discovered that they have this, can, you know, stick with to ensure quick uh, recovery from this. And also, if those who haven't discovered, what kind of lifestyle they should, you know, you know be dealing with now? Because of the huge role the thyroid gland mm -hmm. plays in the whole of the body, it is our collective responsibility 
to make sure that we have a healthy thyroid gland. Mm. Yes. There are some things, there are some lifestyles, smoking. Okay. Too much alcoholism. And there are some minerals that oh, are very, very drinks. essential. Yes. Oh, okay. And we should avoid all these sugar, carbonated drinks, that all those things that kill the body because once they hit, there is all those things that, you know, immune system mm. is in the gut. Yeah. A larger percentage of it is in the gut. So when your gut is okay, your immune system will be at peace. There's no way it can, it can, it can act weird. So another thing is, people that have thyroid disease should try as much as possible to eat food, like, you know, avoid something like soy. Sun. Soy, soy, anything okay, soy. Okay, 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 soy beans. Yes, avoid it. Then it depends on the type that one is suffering. Okay. Yes, like someone that has hyperthyroidism, you know, there are people that will tell you that their thyroid is an iodine deficiency, yes. and they'll be bombarding mm -hmm. themselves. With iodine. Or people will be, all these people that sell their um, supplements, that is the problem. Let me make it, uh, let me point it out oh. now. Okay. You know, the problem we have is ignorance. Somebody saw, yeah, you seen goiter on me, or oh, you have goiter. You don't even know the type of thyroid disease that caused the goiter. And goiter is one symptom they have in common. Mm. And every type of thyroid disease has its own specific treatment. Okay. So if you have hyper and you're taking something that a hypo, someone, a hypo patient should be taking, that means you're bombarding yourself more with more thyroid hormones. Mm. Yes, you will not be getting. So the first thing, the fundamental thing is to diagnose and get diagnosed and don't go and borrow what did you take and all these supplements there. Some of them recently in a 10 year old, they, they sent all the document, I mean supplements, she was, including the ones that are harmful to her and her situation was getting worse before they started looking for me. So. When we are taking supplements, we should be very careful mm -hmm. and even seek our doctor's advice mm -hmm. before you take anything. Thyroid disease is a condition. Once it's there, you have to be careful of what you eat. Because there is and another thing I want to, most autoimmune thyroid disease, when you leave gluten, you know what is gluten? You find it in whole wheat. Yeah. When you leave it, you will get better. Those are the things when your digestive system is okay. You will get better. Your immune system will be at peace. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Ifama Rube, for talking to us on this.